Hello, everyone. Welcome to More Layers. I'm Seth Mariano. And I am Jordan Smith. So if you haven't seen one of our episodes before, we have a general topic that we discuss. We have a list of preset questions that we answer and talk about. We usually have some discussions based on those things. Uh, once we go through all of those, we uh, then go into game time, which usually results in us uh, quizzing each other. Sometimes it has to do with a topic. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and once we go through that, the last section is news that bites and news that rocks. News that bites is something that happened, whether it's in our personal life or something that happened that took place in the news or was reported on in the news that may have not been so good. But then we end on a high note with news that rocks where something good happened. Again, whether personal life or reported on the news. Yep, and uh, the big uh, table talk topic of today is Disney princesses. This is a, a trending topic from what I can see, and uh, mm -hmm. um, a lot of you might appreciate this, and I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so the first question I put down was, what do you suppose are the biggest reasons for the popularity of these characters? Yeah, and I, uh, I wrote down a couple things for this. Uh, the biggest one I felt was the idea of female empowerment. Because oftentimes it's like the guy who's the hero. And even sometimes in these Disney movies, that's still the case for the most part. But there's still a lot of time dedicated to these princesses. And I remember when live action Aladdin came out, a lot of attention was brought to the woman who played Jasmine, especially during her song, because that showed a specific example of female empowerment. Yeah. Uh, I also wrote down that they can be in, an inspiration for a lot of younger audiences because some of the stuff they want to do, some of the personality traits they may have, the way they treat others, it really can be a good guiding point for them to be like, okay, if these characters are doing this, then it might be a good idea. So I want to try in real life and see how I can help other people. If they can do it, I can do it. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of leads into the last one I wrote which was that their stories often teach good life lessons. Sometimes yeah. it's be yourself. Sometimes it's stand up for what you believe in. Sometimes it's fight against wrong or uh, the wrong way people think about things or perceive things or just go against stereotypes. Something to that effect. There may be more than you knew. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I put down one of my first bullet point under that question was, and I put this in quotation marks, wish fulfillment. And then in parentheses, princesses experiencing things some real people can only dream of or feel they can only dream of. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, a little bit earlier about uh, something I heard Phil Vischer, the creator of VeggieTales, say in a speech that dreaming is like the American pastime. And I think he might be right, you know. Well, we like to, I think a lot of us, if not all of us, like to you know, picture uh, the impossible or something bigger than before happening in our lives and and so, in a way, that probably draws audiences to some of these princesses' stories, in a way. Yeah, in a way, I definitely do get that, because it's like, a lot of young girls especially, they dream of being a princess, and these princesses will show what it could be like if they were one. And then I put down... It may be kind of similar to what you've already said, defied odds or princesses doing or achieving more than some believed was possible. Yeah, that's kind of along the lines of what I was saying, where they don't do things that would be expected of them. 
like Jasmine, you wouldn't expect her, at least initially, to escape from the palace and try to live as a common person, whereas Aladdin, for example, is trying to do the exact opposite. And she can probably do some things we couldn't, so oh yeah, <laughs> might absolutely. be uh, useful to uh, I'll call on her for help with something or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next question, what are some legitimate or understandable reasons people have for disliking these characters? Well, one big one that I wrote down that I've seen a lot of people talk about is that a lot of times when they meet the prince or the guy they fall in love with, whoever it is, there usually isn't a lot of time depicted between when the two meet and marriage. Even though a lot of the princesses, at least in the animated stories, are shown to be relatively young. Frozen kind of played on that concept a bit and with uh, the whole storyline of uh, Anna agreeing to marry some guy she just met. Right, and in the end, she didn't actually marry him. She ended up marrying somebody else in the following movie. So that, And it was somebody she met in the first one, so there was at least time for them to know each other before they actually decided, hey, let's get married. Yeah. Well, some people are just so desperate they'll <laughs> they'll do what they think it takes. Right. Yeah. And I mean there's also like Beauty and the Beast where they don't really indicate exactly how long the story takes place over, but it, it still kind of worked. Yeah. yeah. It looks like it could have been maybe like a year, maybe several months because I think we do see weather changes. Yeah, when at least Belle or Maurice first get there, I don't think there's snow on the ground, but there is one point in the film where there is snow, and then by the time the mob song towards the end comes, all the snow's gone again. So I would say it at yeah. least took close to a year, if not a year. Yeah, one thing I said, a legitimate or understandable reason... People seem to think they're too perfect or pretty. Maybe some of that has to do with some people people being jealous or thinking, thinking I could never look like that or I could never be that good at something. But yeah, that might be part of it. I don't know. Well, I mean, some people do see some of the princesses as the kind of person they want to be as opposed to the everyday kind of person they encounter. So I get that. Yeah. yeah. I also said naive or overly optimistic, sappily romantic storylines, rosy endings. Yeah. Um, those all kind of um, fall in the same category in a way. Yeah, in a way they do, and in some ways it kind of makes sense because a good chunk of the princesses, they are usually in their mid to late teen years. So they would still be kind of in that mindset a little bit, but as, yeah. as they grow older, they might mature a little bit, but we don't yeah. usually see that. I'll take in then... Um... And this is probably the one that's brought up the most often. Things seeming to get fixed by a relationship with a man. And bringing that up kind of makes me think of a scene that at least I'll probably be bringing up a little bit later from uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2 where all the princesses are in one room and one of them asks Vanellope, do people assume that all your problems were solved because a big strong man showed up? So it's like it's something that happened so much that even they were making fun of it. Yeah, I think if there is a problem with that is people probably when they say that they don't they haven't considered that um, like uh, the circumstances they're in for one thing or or stuff that happened happened like in between those moments in their films. 
I said this before, like with Ariel, she was pretty much, you know, well, forced to sing for one thing. And, right. yeah, and with Beauty and the Beast, you know, you know, I think Belle makes it pretty clear, clear she's not interested in being near the Beast and, and actually is courageous enough to actually stand up to him and call him out. Call him out. She would give her life to save her father. Yeah. But on a higher note, how about this next question? Who are some princesses you find particularly likable and why? Well, the first one I wrote down, and I think this is one that we both did, was uh, Rapunzel from Tangled. Yep, I, I did that too. I definitely liked the energy. I liked how loyal she was to uh, Mother Gothel, despite the fact that she wasn't aware at first who she actually was. But she was loyal to her. She tried to do everything that was tasked with her. Even when it seemed like a lot, she pushed through. She had a lot of different ways to entertain herself. She had a close, loyal friend. She had many talents. Uh, and then eventually, when she did step out of the tower, she just wanted to explore everything. And she wasn't afraid to speak up against the... Um, I'm not sure what they'd be referred to as, but the guys in the pub or whatever that is. Like, she, she's not afraid to speak up against them when they're about to beat the snot out of, of Flynn. Yeah. It's like, yeah, she's a little intimidated when one of them walks up to her, but she slowly, or rather quickly, rather, uh, warms up and she's back to her old self. And then towards the end, when Mother Gothel uh, tries to bring her back or tries to persuade her to go back with her, she stands up for herself against the person that she'd known and been loyal to for her, almost her whole life. So that's definitely something to consider. I don't know if it had more to do with Mandy Moore's voiceover performance or the writing of the character. I mean, I mean, it must have been a combination of both, but, but I was you about know. to say. Because it's yeah. like, you could have a good director or you could have a really good voice, a perfect fit for a character, but one without the other can throw things completely off. Like you could have the perfect dialogue, but if the wrong person is trying to deliver those lines, that it could just sound completely wrong. You want someone who can get it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. I also wrote down Jasmine, and I kind of talked about this already. She went against stereotypes. She didn't want to be uh, controlled or owned, quote unquote, by a man. She wanted to only do things when she felt she was ready for it. And if she were to marry someone, she wanted it to be because they loved each other as opposed to being married by force or by law. And despite all these people that were expecting things of her, she would not submit to them. You know, there's some, um, some extent you should be obedient, but, uh, but within certain ungodly reason. Well, yeah. And that's the other thing she recognized when, a few things were wrong. Granted, she could still be seen as a rebellious teenager, but she wasn't afraid to speak her mind when she felt something should be changed. I also put down Anna from Frozen. And, sure. And uh, um, she seems like a more a more laid back and um, open, openly more human and less perfect type of girl. And that's probably something that is so refreshing for some of the female people out out there watching those movies and something something that feels comforting to them. 
Oh, absolutely. A lot of uh, princesses out there, some people might refer to as one-dimensional characters, but Anna, she was not your average princess, and I mean that in the best way. Once again, then, I kind of debated whether or not this counted, but Mirabelle from Encanto. You know, I haven't seen that one, so I'll take what you say and uh, go with it, because I, again, I haven't seen it. Uh, just considering her um, sort of background and a, a sort of a family that kind of runs this community with some kind of magic powers, so m maybe that counts. So, but yeah. if it does, I think, you know, um, I think mm, uh, I like she's simply relatable, speaks out against injustice. She has a, has a way of seeing a good side in people that some might deny or not acknowledge. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, the last one I wrote, she's not... I would probably say she's not technically a princess, but she's often depicted with the princesses. Uh, but I wrote down Mulan... Uh, she did eventually fall in love with, and if you watch the sequel, married a military leader, which I don't know it would technically count as royalty, but again, usually she's lined up with the princesses and is in that scene in Wreck-It Ralph, so I would say it counts. Uh, but her courage to put her life on the line to save her father's she went right up against the main villain of the story multiple times, again, risking her life to save someone else's. And through her nobility, she pretty much saved an entire country. All right. And then I just have one last question. Who would you probably like to see play what princesses in future live action Disney flicks? All right, so I, I did have a couple here. Um, I would love to see if uh, Mandy Moore could reprise her role in a live-action version of the film. That could, All right. I could definitely see that. Maybe uh, Dove Cameron, who's already done some Disney stuff before. Right, Descendants, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then... The other person I wrote down was if uh, Halle Bailey wasn't already going to play, I think it's Ariel in live action Little Mermaid. If she wasn't already doing that, I think she might be able to do a really good Tiana. Yeah, yeah well, I'm not that familiar with Halle Bailey, um, though um, she is playing Ariel in the new Little Mermaid. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she could probably do that. And uh, uh, I put down a few, and um, you know, this one might sound weird to some of you, but um, I said uh, Jackie Evanco as Mirabelle. Yeah. Now that would be an interesting choice. Um, like I, pretty much, I, yeah. I was going to say, I've definitely seen Jackie Evanco be perform before, so I know how she can sing, and it's phenomenal. So that alone, I could see her doing a number of Disney princesses. Oh, well, I've never really seen her act in anything except like on like one PSA or something. But I'm just I was just thinking about what she's publicly shared about her personal life and, and her mental health and and some similarities between that and Mirabelle, I think I think might. I might make her a fit for that role. I could definitely understand that. I wonder if some people would have issues with the ethnicity. Yeah, they probably prefer someone with more with more clear Hispanic blood, maybe. Yeah, I, I only say that because, uh, you know, people who... Like characters who are, for example, Spanish, Hispanic, or Asian, they typically would like 
someone in real life with that same background to portray that character. Like one thing that's really infamous in let's say live action anime adaptations is something called whitewashing where they have a bunch of white characters depict or, or what white actors rather depicting characters that were originally written by Asian people or characters that look Asian. So it, it's not something people are particularly fond of. So they just have to be really careful with who they cast nowadays. And then I said, um, Anna Kendrick as Moana, um, just the personality similarity between, uh, the animated Moana and, uh, and, uh, Kendrick's sort of uh, fiery vibe. Now I'm trying to remember where have I seen Anna Kendrick perform before? Cause I know I've seen her in stuff. Like um, Pitch Perfect, Trolls, Noel. It, it might have mm. been Trolls, maybe. Uh, in Into the Woods, she was in that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, she can sing as far as I know, and she can act as far as I know, so. I mean, if she can sing and she has a matching personality, maybe it could work. Yeah. And I said just one more, Lacey Chabert as Snow White. Uh, Lacey Chabert was uh, on the show Party of Five, did the Wild Thornberries, and now she does, and does a bunch of Hallmark films. Um, I just think she has a sort of similar smiley, in the innocent, affectionate vibe that could work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they were working on a live action Snow White. And I, the reason why I say that is because I could have sworn not too long ago, I saw a screenshot that they had with the supposed actress who was playing the character in the costume. And it looks very similar to the animated version. So they might already have somebody cast. Maybe they don't. I'm not sure. Could have been fake. Which is okay if they do. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, all right, so that's all I got for that. Um, why don't we go into our game time, and uh, unless Jordan has a quiz, um, I've got one. Yeah, I got one, too. Yeah, all right, so we'll start with his. Okay, I got five questions here. All right. First off, who is the only Disney princess that originated in a Pixar movie? Merida. And do you remember the name of the movie? Brave. Yep. Yep. I saw that in theater. Did you see that one? I did actually. Uh, yeah. We we weren't like too overly excited about it, only because we didn't know much about the film. But when we saw it, it was like, you know what? This was okay. Yeah, I approached it pretty much nonchalantly, like you did. But but well, I remember liking it though. Yeah, that's fair. It's kind of yeah. like when I first saw uh, Guardians of the Galaxy in theaters. It's like, I know nothing about these characters, so I don't know, based on very little knowledge, if I'm going to like this or not. But then I came out, it's like, you know what? I enjoyed that. Now, honestly, I felt a similar way going into the new season of Stranger Things. I was like, you know, you know, I'll, I'll sit through it for my family, but I'm not really enthusiastic about it. But it ended up being my favorite one so far. Okay. Yeah. 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 Have you seen it yet? Uh, which one again? I'm sorry. I just blanked. Uh, uh, Stranger Things, the new season. Oh, oh, oh no. I haven't seen any of uh, Stranger Things yet. Oh. Okay. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I just haven't seen it. Fair enough. All right. <clears throat> Question number two, in Wreck-It Ralph 2, when all the Disney princesses go into the, a fighting stance upon seeing Vanellope, who is the only one that approaches her without a weapon or magic? Uh, Rapunzel? She has a frying pan. Yeah. How could you forget that? Let's see. Um... 
Mm, Anna? It was Anna. Yeah. Like all the other ones, they have like a sword or a staff. Anna, when she uh, is shocked by the fact that Vanellope says she's a princess, you can see that she only has her fists. Well, if they had snow, she probably would have used that. I think did she throw a snowball in the in the movie in Frozen? Uh, she might have thrown s some snow at somebody at, at Kristoff, uh, maybe. I was about to say, I know she threw a bag of carrots at him at one point, but yeah, that that was in that specific movie in Wreck It Ralph too. I don't think she had a specific weapon. No, no carrots, no nothing. Nope. All right. What's the next one? All right. Question three. In the same scene, which two princesses ask Vanellope if she had ever been kidnapped or enslaved? I think Belle would have to be one of them. Yep. And I think um, no, Rapunzel, maybe, because she was abducted and pretty much held a slave. Yep, it was Belle and Rapunzel. Okay. All right, question four. And I haven't seen Ralph Breaks the Internet. Oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. No. I had no but idea. But that's fine. No, but that's fine. I think that kind of makes it more fun, though. Okay. Uh, question four. Which Disney princess was heavily based on a real person albeit with many noticeable historical inaccuracies. A real person. Same name and everything. Uh, okay. Um, Mulan? It was not Mulan. Jasmine? Nope. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, Aurora? It was not Aurora. Eh. Boy. Hmm, Bell? It was not Bell. <laughs> um, um, um Cinderella? Nope. Uh hmm, Tiana? Not Tiana. Uh hmm, hmm, Rapunzel? <laughs> not Rapunzel. Hmm. Elsa? Anna. Uh, no. Uh, Merida. No. Uh, uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, I got nothing. I finally stumped him. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, Pocahontas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, she was a real historical figure. That's true. Yeah, she was. And then the Disney movie, they tried to tell her story, but there were some historical inaccuracies that people noticed that they didn't really like how they changed. Hmm. So, Apparently a ton of deviations. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Oh, all right. Is there one more? There is one more, yep. Yeah. Uh, Name three princesses with animal sidekicks and bonus points if you know that animal's name. Let's see. Rapunzel has a frog, Pascal. He's a chameleon, but yes. Oh, all right. Right. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah. Mo Moana has a chicken, but I'm not don't know the name. I think it's Hay uh, or something like that. Let's see. Um, um, Cinderella, uh, Gus Gus, Jacques, and a whole bunch of other mice. So, 
there. Yep. Yeah. Maybe there are other ones. Um, or, or there were. I mean, you named three, so. Yeah. Well, uh, Snow White and the woodland animals, the countless woodland animals, that might count. Yep. There's Mulan yeah. with Mushu and the horse. Pocahontas with uh, with a, a raccoon, maybe some other animals. Yeah. I think a raccoon and a hummingbird played prominent roles in that movie. Uh I don't know if Quasimodo, even though he's not a Disney princess, technically had any animal friends, but uh, there was the birdie meant at the beginning, and then Esmeralda, she had the goat. Um, trying to think. Aurora, also a bunch of animals. I don't... I mean, Anna also had a horse, but he was only seen during the first part of her trek up the mountain, and then that horse ran away, so... I don't know if that um, really counts. Um, was that her horse or the family's horse or or what? I never knew. Might have been a standard palace horse. Maybe. All right. And I guess I guess Rapunzel also had Maximus, even though he wasn't technically her horse. All right. Well, I've got five questions here. Um, okay. And they also happen to be Disney related, well, not okay. by design necessarily, but uh, just um, kind of the best I could think of. But all right. Anyway, sure. what director, what director of Forrest Gump, Back to the Future and the Polar Express is set to direct the new Pinocchio movie coming in September? Well, I was about to say Alan Menken, but I think he's the composer, not the director. Uh who directed those movies? I know I've heard the name, but I'm having trouble remembering. Um, he also directed Welcome to Marwin and Jim Carrey's A Christmas Carol. Is that the one that was animated but kind of did motion tracking for his face? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, shoot, I, I forget, honestly. Um. Robert Zemeckis. Zemeckis, okay. I figured it had mm -hmm. something, like, started with an R, but I couldn't think of the name. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What Oscar-winning star of Walk the Line is producing a new live-action version of Tinkerbell? I didn't even know they were doing a live-action Tinkerbell. Yeah. Uh... Might it be someone I recognize? Have they done other things before? Um, star of Walk the Line, Legally right. Blonde. You did say that. Uh, Reese Witherspoon? Yep. Son of a gun, okay. <laughs> well, I think she has um, some years of producing experience under her belt by now. but I mean, she probably does, and I don't even realize it. I just only ever seen her like on camera or voice acting for something. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right. What actress, famous for her superhero film work, is playing the main antagonist in the new Snow White? In the live action Snow White? Yep. Let's see. And she did what before? Uh, Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot? Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, I, I could see that. Hmm. It's kind of a surprise, but you know, you know, I only know her as Wonder Woman, so oh, what do I know? I mean, Idina Menzel, she played a princess before and a villain in other stories, so I could see this being done well. Yeah. So next, I have what comedian known for his food-related humor is set to star in a new Peter Pan film. Food-related humor. Yeah. If he was still alive, I would have said John Panette, but unfortunately he's not. Uh, and the only other one I can think of 
at least com comedians that I know that talk a lot about food would have been Gabriel Iglesias. Uh, nope. Not him. But okay. this guy has been in some uh, Chrysler commercials. He's been in uh, the movie Chappaquiddick. Um, uh, that's about all else I know. I'm having trouble thinking of any others because John Panetta yeah. and Iglesias are the two that I really know that center some of their humor around food. Yeah. Jim Gaffigan. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think yeah. about him. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one more. What okay. co-star What co-star of Frozen is co-producing a new Hunchback film? co-star uh my first thought would have been Kristen bell no nope. not Kristen bell okay uh trying to think of the other actors names yeah I'm... it's a male male co-star well then i would guess it's either the guy who played Kristoff or josh gad Josh Gad, is it? Yeah. Yep. Voice of Olaf. Movie? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I could, that would be interesting then. I, I'd love to see his spin on it. Yeah. After uh, after that whole series of Olaf shorts recreating Disney films. Yeah. Guess let's see. Yeah. I actually went back after we talked about it in that one episode and saw it. His yeah. uh, recap of other Disney movies yeah. as Olaf. And it's like, you know what? That was actually pretty funny. Yeah. All right. Now all that's left is news that bites and news that rocks. And um, I'll let you go ahead and start with your thing that bites. Okay. The news that bites that I wrote down, I specifically uh, listed the shooting that took place in texas but uh i guess i could really say a lot of the shootings that have happened recently in general like the one that yeah. happened in buffalo new york the one that happened in texas uh, i think one happened in chattanooga recently uh, there was a shooting at a hospital somewhere that got a lot of spotlight but i don't remember exactly where that one was but yeah th there's been quite a few shootings that at least have been publicized recently. In fact, there you was never really one, know. There was even a shooting, if you want to call it that, in Gates, New York, as well at an Italian restaurant that I've actually been to before, that exact location. Uh, but in that particular instance, nobody was hurt. It was really close, though, because a bullet whizzed right past a deputy's head, but again, nobody was actually injured, thankfully. Oh, man, you never know. Exactly. It could happen at yeah. any time, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a little something that bites. It's not exactly as big a deal. It's just a, a, a something rather weird, I guess, at the most. Like a personal and nitpick type thing, or... Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. It's um apparently someone is creating a sort of horror movie or like a slasher pick or something. Something starring Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, part of the reason for that is because either very recently or in the very near future, the character of Winnie the Pooh is going into the public domain, which means that anyone can use it without needing permission from someone else. And people would take advantage of that. And around the time it was announced, so was this apparent horror movie. And they even showed a screenshot of what the character, I don't know if it is Winnie the Pooh himself or someone dressed as the character, but it does look kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. 
And that might kind of ruin the character for me now. Um, it's a character I grew up with, and it was always like, like the picture of innocence and happiness. And now, and now it's like they're giving them a whole 180 turn, and I don't know if I like it. See, to me, it comes across as one of those things where it's like a fan fiction one if type thing. Like, what if Winnie the Pooh starred in a horror film, except now, instead of it just being fan fiction, it's going to be reality? Yeah, um, it could be good. I guess it could be clever, but I'm not so sure right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people who grew up in the character are not going to like it because they're already used to the way Winnie the Pooh has been depicted for decades. Uh, and really, up to this point, I think the worst thing that happened to Winnie the Pooh is when he was stretching one day and his butt split open a little bit, but he instantly fixed it. So, <laughs> And he was a stuffed bear, so there wasn't anything nasty. True. <laughs> All right, and what about news that rocks? For news that rocks. So for anyone who hasn't seen any of our episodes prior to this, we have talked about on multiple occasions of a theater group that Seth and I are a part of called Artists Unlimited, which allows people with varying types of disabilities to perform on stage without prejudice. Uh, and... I mention this because my news at Rocks is that that theater group has actually finally announced a day for a cast reunion, which will hopefully include an announcement on what the next show is. Yeah. Yeah. After my first show with uh, Shrek a few years ago, ago, we missed out on that. And um, um, we, um, what, what do I want to say? Um, You know, the, it's kind of been on the fence whether or not there will even be a production this year. And uh, I did get an email about it, about, about like a, I think there was a certain date and time mentioned in it. Yeah, I and, think it was towards the end of July. Yeah, I think July. Like 27th or the 28th, something like that. Like on a Friday. Right. Yeah. Normally they have the reunion in february march maybe even april but the reason why it took them so long this year from what i understand is not because they were deciding whether or not they were going to have a show to begin with but rather because of covid they wanted to see whether or not they had to split the cast in half again yeah yeah i'm still not sure whether or not there will be a production but you know, with the way things uh, things are progressing, like now, now there's the Voices and Dances Unlimited show coming up in about in about a week or so at the Kodak Theater, and and well, that's kind of a good sign. It is a good sign, and I have reason to believe there will be a show because a they're doing a cast reunion, which is where they usually announce the next show, and then I recently was visited by one of the people on the board who often helps with the decision making in that department uh, and they specifically said they're doing a show with just one cast this time instead of two so everyone's going to be together again which tells me there will be a show all right i'll trust you on that okay all right and my thing that rocks is um, something at least interesting that I saw in the news, specifically from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Okay. Uh, the, the announcement of a new musical based on the film The Karate Kid. Now, that would actually be interesting to see, because I feel like, at least to my knowledge, there aren't too many musicals focused on martial arts. And really... If this is a musical, they could actually put a lot of like fighting moves into choreography for said musical. So I think that could actually work. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. As you've probably found out if you've seen or streamed past episodes of this show, I'm a fan of the show Cobra Kai. I did see the first Karate Kid film once, but um, uh, I wasn't really that into it. Maybe it was maybe it was the slow pacing or what I perceive to be the slow pacing, but uh, but the general concept though, it does, I think is a good one. And, and after seeing what the theater did with Shrek and, and how they turned that movie into a musical and expanded on stuff from that, um, I think, I think a musical adaptation might make the Karate Kid story more intriguing. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, like with Shrek the musical, it's one of those things where you don't really expect it to be one. In fact, when I told a bunch of people that I knew that I was in a production of Shrek the musical, a good chunk of those people reacted the same way by going, wait, there's a musical version of Shrek? So really, huh. if Shrek can pull out an unexpected musical and have it really work, I think Karate Kid could too. I just like there's been a a trend lately in like recent years of them turning films into musicals like Mean Girls, and now there's a Back to the Future one apparently. I think that just um, I think it's just uh, getting ready maybe to do an off Broadway run or something. I was about to say uh, I didn't know about it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, the movie's pretty good. I think um, I think I would enjoy seeing that one too. Now I'm curious how they would do a Back to the Future one because there's three parts to the story, and each one is relatively long. So I don't know if they would try to just base it off the first one or try to put elements from all three parts together. I'm not sure. Uh, my first thought was maybe they'd focus on adapting just the first one, but maybe they could do, they could like split time between all three parts, maybe. Maybe. That could work. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, that's going to do it for us. Um, stream all our episodes on Facebook, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Spotify. Keep your questions and comments going and... And we'll be back sometime soon, hopefully. Yeah, and if you have any comments on this episode that we just did, or if you want to know, or, or rather, if you want to tell us what topics you want us to talk about in the future, if you have any way you think you could help us improve the show, let us know. Uh, just any comments in general. Send them our way. We love to see what you have to say, and we'll react as best as we can. Thanks, everybody, for streaming this, and see you soon. See you next week, hopefully.